Hello guys and welcome to episode 2 and in this episode we're going to get a few buddies so one of them is a pirate the twins Vlad and so mother crazy motherfucker enjoy Hello guys and welcome back to Saints Row Get whatever shit and so here we have the quest log Let's see, let's see Activities mm -hmm. What the fuck is this? Okay, so Okay Oh good. shit, so... We need to rally Blackbird. What's up? <sighs> Abandoned ship! We've been boarded! <laughs> <laughs> Damn things off my ship! I hope there's not something ridiculous like a hundred of these to find. What? They got a bit of treasure in that chest over there. The weapon you find inside may help with our little imp problem. Whoa! Okay. Running out of juice. I summoned these imps to serve as my crew. I forgot what a handful they could be. Once aboard, they wouldn't listen to their captain. They ran amok in the bowels of the ship. Pirate voice would that be? Wow. Zaniac's okay. destruction of Earth had a profound impact on the afterlife. Mm -hmm. 
To heaven, it was a logistical nightmare. St. Peter's meticulous nature drove purgatory wait times to unbearable levels. Meanwhile, in hell, where souls in pain were used as currency, it created a new era of prosperity for the wickedly enterprising. This economic boom resulted in the coffers of hell to be overflowing, okay. which in turn piqued the interest of the most notorious man that sailed the Seven Seas. Long had Blackbeard been a thorn in Satan's side, robbing tax collectors on a semi-regular basis. But the promise of an immeasurable fortune drove him to be even bolder. An arrangement was reached. Blackbeard would provide information on strategic targets in exchange for a share of the profit. Johnny, who was interested in murder, not money, happily agreed. Nice, nice. Grunchy, the ability to summon my crew whenever they're needed. Thank you very much, my friend. Thank you for the weapon. And... <coughs> nice. Okay, I can summon shit now. Double tap, blah, 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 blah. Okay, okay. Thank you for the God's Hammer. And I will see you next time. Yeah. Let's... I raided a Centerpol office and found information on where the president is being kept. Evidently, they've been trapped in some sort of soul crystal inside Satan's palace. Breaking in is an impossibility. Your best bet to save them is to continue to try to draw Satan out of his palace. This is what I'm talking about. Let's go. Ah, this feels good. Yep, it, it does. These wings. Yeah. Wait, what? See what these things can do. Lights up. William Shakespeare, humanity's greatest playwright. And hell's most diabolical purveyor of entertainment looks on as a brave mortal on an Orphean quest enters. The bard's interest is piqued, and he looks to test his visitor's mettle. The masked tragedies were used to enemies cowering as they approached. But soon they realized that they faced a foe with courage and nobility, traits uncommon in the fires of perdition. Just shoot him. Yeah. The inf 
exciting incident resolved. <coughs> come for right. <coughs> okay. What the fuck? Oh, this is an upper effort. Fuck you, demon. Oh, I feel much better, thanks. The battle raged on below, and as bullets and blood flew, the bard arched a curious eyebrow. Could this mortal be the exact thing that Shakespeare needed? You're nothing, but this battle is far from over. Who the fuck is that guy? Rise. Oh my god. And now, Act 3! Shakespeare eagerly awaited meeting the champion that dispatched so many of his men. Undoubtedly, they were here for the Bard's aid. And while happy endings were not a thing found in hell, Shakespeare always had a soft spot for comfort. Okay, another friend. In the land of the living, William Shakespeare is regarded as one of the most prolific playwrights of all time. However, to the denizens of hell, the bard is seen in a far different light. After selling his soul for fame and adoration, Shakespeare served in hell as Satan's spy master general. In doing his duty, Shakespeare would punish the souls he was investigating by forcing them to perform in grotesque passion plays for Satan's amusement. But in a Twelfth Night-esque twist, Shakespeare found himself living a double life. While he projected an image of cruelty, his heart was as soft as Jezebel's. In secret, he would tutor her on the classics and act out the works of his mortal days. When Satan found out, he cast Shakespeare out of the palace, believing that the poet would be tormented by the populace of hell, far out of Jezebel's sight. But Satan had not counted on the bard's cunning. Embracing his persona of master torturer, Shakespeare and his followers, the tragedies, took root in the entertainment district, biding their time for revenge. Okay. And so Shakespeare called forth the Deus Ex Machina to bestow our protagonist with the arcane power of Force Stomp. Thank you. Remember this? Uh, this was amazing in the last game. Know yourself. Find a way to control lightning. This shit is so amazing. Okay. Let's go. Relax. And let's go to Vlad. So Shakespeare, the pirate guy, and Vlad. Okay. I mean, hell is more amazing than. I mean, no, it's not. I guess I have no idea. 
<gasps> no! Shit, 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 shit. Don't die. This was amazing. Okay. We're close. I mean, no. Damn it. Hello Vlad, how about you? Enter prison? What the Switch, switch, switch. The old one of us goes. Can I fly and shoot? Nope. Need to rest the wings. Let us return to my castle, that we may plot our next steps in proper surrounds. Okay, Vlad. Johnny led Vlad back to his castle, which since his incarceration became a haven for frat parties and squatters. But the systematic impaling of trespassers would have to wait. Okay. Vlad was a man of his word, and was eager to provide intel that could aid in hobbling Satan's armies. Bestow upon you this Stygian cold fire. The what? the twins okay so as you can see these missions to do some shit for these guys to learn the activities I will do it but next time because we don't have a lot of time I mean I don't want to make this episode too long and we need to rally the twins or something like that but yeah
I remember the twins. Yeah. We're standing in a parking garage. I don't like it either, but Centerpool isn't giving us many options. I can't believe they tried to force us out. I can't believe you forgot the mimosas. I think we have bigger problems. I don't think you realize how much I love mimosas. I can't help but notice that people are trying to kill you. Yeah, they're really big on that here. What did you do? Is now really a good time? We can wait until we're done shooting people. Well, I'm great at multicasting. Remember when we offered you a deal on that airplane and you responded by killing everyone? Yeah. It's like that, but worse. This all hell got to offer. know that Kinsey misses you. Really? That's so sweet. Who's Kinsey? You remember Kinsey. She was that hacker that Matt Miller hated. Isn't she crazy? You know, she really grows on you. Are you kidding me? What? in hell, Kiki and Viola wasted no time in doing what they do best, facilitate the running of businesses. However, the De Winter sister's success did not sit well with other would-be power players in hell. The sisters' operations all came under attack at once, forcing them on the run. Soon the twins found themselves on the receiving end of an offer they couldn't refuse. After all, it was better to own one-fifth of something than to be dead. So... Helped us? Now let us help you. Here's a little something made popular by another group of sisters. The Gorgons. Blast! Okay, you know that one, I think. Nice, 
Okay. So... Too dumb to figure it out yet? You backed the wrong horn. Okay guys, so I ran the episode here. So we got four superpowers as you can see and four friends I guess. So yeah, I'll end the episode here. Don't forget to like, comment and subscribe and I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.